Hi, welcome to Kaleidoscope Yoga. My name is Amber and today in our slow flow we're going to be working on a little bit of power and balance. So please come and find a comfortable seat. I'm sitting up on a blanket. Um, if you're tight in the legs, in the um, quads or in the hamstrings, this will be a little bit easier for your legs to find some space here. If you find that you're sitting with your knees closer together, I definitely suggest sitting on a blanket or you can sit on a block as well. If you have low back pain um, or just uh, un some uncomfortable sensations in the low back, then I suggest using blocks as well for some of our shapes like our forward folds, uh, things like that. And you'll see that I don't go into complete forward folds. Hopefully you're doing your own little journey and experience so you don't need to look up at the uh, computer or whatever it is you're watching this on um, during that time. But just to let you know, um, I'm going to be taking a little bit better care. No, that's not right. Hi, welcome to Kaleidoscope Yoga. My name is Amber Clyde and I'm super happy that you found me here in my little neck of the woods on YouTube. So in today's slow flow practice, we're going to be working on some power and balance. So I'm really excited that you're here to join me today. Uh, grab a couple of blocks, especially if you know you need a little extra support. Uh, you might need them in the balance and also if you have low back discomfort that come in super handy when doing forward folds. So you'll see that I use them. Um, I have become great friends with my props. So there is no shame at all in using props. Uh, I'm also sitting up on a blanket right now. I have really tight hamstrings and so uh, sitting up really allows my pelvis to kind of tilt forward a little bit. I can get a nice little arc in my lumbar spine, my low back, and it also gives me a little bit more length through the tops of the legs so my knees get a little bit closer to the ground. Now we're all on our own journey and stuff so um, never compare yourself to me. If you're just beginning, I'm so happy that you're here and I hope this practice, uh, you find it easy to follow. If you need to take a break, you're always welcome to take a child's pose or come to mountain pose. Just take a couple of breaths. Just listen to your body and this will be a lot of fun. So let's find that comfortable position where we're seated. And you don't have to sit with your legs crossed. I know I always say that, but it's just a gentle reminder that, um, you know, it's not always comfortable for everybody. So find a seat that does feel comfortable for you. And we want to elongate through the spine, lifting the crown of the head to the ceiling, uh, letting your shoulders relax back. Take a couple of breaths, <sighs> nice and deep, sigh it out. Let go of whatever is um, holding on to you today. If you don't have anything, that's amazing. But if you have something, even if it's like, God, I don't want to do laundry when I get done, just let it go. Let it go. You're here. We're together. You've started the journey already by rolling out your mat. And now it's time to have a little bit of fun and just be accountable for yourself and for your your health, mind, body, and soul. So once we find this comfortable seated position, I'd love to ask for you to close your eyes, but of course, if that doesn't feel comfortable to you, you can just gaze at the floor. No pressure here ever. If something doesn't feel comfortable in our practice together, you do not have to do it. You are not obligated to do anything except just notice and listen if you feel uncomfortable honor that so after we've taken a couple of nice deep breaths we just want to check in and make sure that we're not holding anywhere in the body that we're not um, i always find that i'm kind of my muscles and my legs start to kind of tense and i have to really be active about telling them that you know what it's okay you can release so notice if there's any of that happening in your body. Um, maybe the legs, maybe the shoulders, the neck. 
uh, even the space between the eyes, uh, lifting and lowering the eyebrows can help with that, kind of smoothing out that space. Hmm. And just giving yourself a, a little bit of love and encouragement while we take this time, these few moments just to come into our space. Maybe you start by noticing the foundation beneath you, this beautiful earth that holds us up and does so much more. And then, you know, maybe the foundation of the home that you live in or wherever it is that you're practicing right now. If you're outside, I'm so jealous because it's 30 degrees here, <laughs> which is why I'm all bundled up. Maybe notice the mat beneath you and the weight, the heaviness of your body on top of it and how easy it can feel to just kind of settle in knowing that you're supported you're not going to topple over or anything like that you are completely supported and held in love And then maybe you begin to notice the sounds that are around you. Maybe you can hear something that's far off in the distance. And then you can start to bring your thoughts on the sounds inward. Notice what you can hear around you. I've got a rooster crowing across the way. I can hear my clock ticking. My house is settling. And then begin to draw inward. So now we start to notice our breath. Right? This is the closest sound that we have because it's internal. How cool is that? And just notice the breath. You know, our breath can tell us so much about how we are feeling. We can notice the breath with the fight or flight response. Of course, it speeds up. If you're ready to flee and if you're feeling content the breath can be a nice even pace sometimes so slow and so small is the movement of the belly rising and falling that it's hard to detect and I hope you find peace like that often And a few more breaths here. Letting go of stress, of muscle tension, of thoughts that don't serve you, any negative thoughts that might be sneaking in. And then if you'd like, I invite you to set an intention and you can draw your hands together at heart space into Anjali Mudra. And you can tilt your chin down just a little bit as we bow down and honor ourselves for coming to the mat today. And we set our intention, our sankalpa, which can really be anything that you'd like. You can even dedicate your practice today if that calls to you. That's always something beautiful. If you know someone who is struggling or just needs a little extra care or good juju sent their way, it's always a beautiful practice to send your yoga practice to them, your intention for your practice. Good. 
And when you're ready, if you've set your intention, please unfold your hands, keeping your elbows at your side and your palms out, almost like you're offering something to someone or perhaps you're receiving today. Sometimes it's easier to offer than it is to receive. So whatever feels most comfortable for you. So we find this integrity in our spine and we're going to take an inhale and lengthen a bit through the spine and we're going to twist to the right, but we're just going to twist a little and it's going to come from the base of the belly. So you're just going to twist just a little. We're not twisting the upper back. Pause. Take another deep inhale. And this time we move our rib cage. As we exhale, take another deep inhale. And now when we exhale, we let our shoulders twist. So instead of just doing one big twist, we do it in segments and we can really feel the body stack. And then we're going to take an inhale. And as we exhale, we're going to come back to center. Good. Let's do it to the other side. Big inhale. As we exhale, we're just going to twist from the low belly. And I know this may feel a little weird. You may be a little hard to detect, but I know you can do it. Breathe it in. Send the rib cage. So now we can feel that kind of mid back coming into our twist. Release the breath. Inhale, lift the spine, lengthen the spine and breathe in. And shoulders, exhale. Oh, I feel so good. Nice and slow. Take a big inhale. And come on back to center. We're going to do that one more time each side. Big breath in. Twist from the low belly. Exhale. Inhale. Breathe it in. Twist at the ribs. And by now you should be looking over your knee. Big inhale. Twist. Shoulder comes back. Big inhale. And come back to center. Release the breath. Let's do that opposite side. Inhale. Exhale from the low belly. Inhale, breathe in. Exhale, the rib cage. Inhale. Exhale, shoulders. While we're here, bring your right hand to your left knee, left hand behind you for a little support in that spine. And let's go ahead and kind of uh, roll or move the head from side to side, getting a little bit of movement into the, the uh, neck. I almost said into the knees. <laughs> Good. <sighs> Inhale, lift through the spine. Exhale, release to center. Take a big breath in. And exhale, we're going to twist one final time to your right. Left hand comes to the right knee, right hand behind for a little extra integrity in that spine. And again, you may find some movement in your neck, however that feels good to you. Good. Take an inhale and exhale. Come back to center. If it's going to feel good for you, you're welcome to go ahead and switch the feet. Drawing the opposite foot in front. And we're going to bring our hands to our knees and we're going to find a little bit of movement here by drawing the chest forward. We're going to find a nice little 
arc in the spine, lifting the gaze, and exhale, rounding in the upper back. Inhale, bring it forward and up. So seated cat cow here. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, up. And exhale, down. Let's do one more. Breathe it in and up. And exhale, chin to chest. And stay like this just for a moment. Bring those fingertips forward, reaching down to the ground so we find this nice dome through the shoulders. And you're going to engage the belly. So draw a low belly to spine. And we're going to reach forward with the hands and draw the hands all the way up. And exhale, right hand down. We're going to take a nice deep stretch here to the right on the left side. So left hip anchors to the ground. And if it feels good, you can gaze up at the ceiling and let your left shoulder open up. So we find this beautiful space through the chest. Take a big breath here, and as you exhale, we're just going to float that hand down. Let it kind of uh, come down in front of you and rest on the left side. Breathe the right hand up, and exhale to the left. Right hip anchors to the ground, and if it feels comfortable, gaze to the sky. Open up by drawing the right arm back just a little just as far as feels comfortable here. And if none of this feels comfortable, you can just keep your gaze forward and just bring the arm up. And then when you're ready to take your next inhale, you're just gonna sweep the right hand down. Let's find some shoulder rolls up and back. You can breathe in, lift them up, and exhale, drop them back. Let's do that a few more times. And I invite you here to experiment and maybe play with one shoulder roll, the other shoulder roll. Just kind of have some fun here. Feel into the neck. Switch directions if that calls to you. A lot of popping and cracking happening here. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and come on to our hands and our knees. So we're going to come into our tabletop position. I'm going to scoop my blanket out of the way. I might use it later, maybe, maybe not. You're always welcome to use it, especially if you need a little extra comfort in your knees. So hands are going to uh, be spread, fingertips are going to be spread, and we're just going to wake up the wrists a little bit here. Uh, so before we do that, let's find a nice a straight spine, press through the palms, hug in that low belly and connect the low ribs too. So we want to come into the power in our center. All right, so this is a very small movement. All you're going to do is lift your wrist just a little bit, just enough to get a sheet of paper under there, if that's what we were doing. So we're pressing fingertips into the ground and all of your knuckles can press into the ground too, the base of the knuckles at the top of the palm, and then just lift the wrist. You can do them both, you can do one at a time, and we're just gonna do this for, I don't know, about 30 seconds or so. So just continue to do it. And the wrists are probably going to feel tired quite quickly. And that's okay. Little wrist push-ups here. Lifting. And seriously, I mean, my wrists are not lifting up hardly at all. Just waking them up. Good. So go ahead and lift the wrists all the way up and just press gently into the fingertips. And we can do one hand and then the other when we do this because I don't want to 
uh, put too much stress on the fingers if we do both hands at the same time. So if you lift the wrist, you can also kind of rock uh, the wrist back and forth. So pressure into the pinky, roll it across the knuckles, pressure into the thumb. So just kind of play around and get into the fingers, start to wake them up. Ooh, some of them are super tight. <laughs> And then just take a little trip here. Walk your hands in tiny little increments and start to turn your fingertips towards your knees. And some of us uh, can do this, some of us may not be able to. You know, it just depends on the flexibility in the wrists. I can tell you my left hand um, is so much more flexible than my right. Just I'm, I'm very dominant right-handed. Um, so this is a, a little uncomfortable in my right wrist. So if you're feeling a little uncomfortable, I think that's pretty natural. Not hurting anything. Just stretching and getting into these little nooks and crannies that we don't usually pay attention to. And then when you've had enough of that, go ahead and walk them back forward. Good. Give them a little shake. One hand and then the other. All right, so we're gonna come back and uh, widen the fingers so they're nice and wide, spread out nicely. Press into the fingertips. We're gonna bring the tops of our toes to the mat. We're gonna hug in that low belly and we're gonna press through our palms so our arms lengthen and straighten and our elbow pits shine forward. Now our shoulders are kind of, uh, they're kind of uh, hunkered down, uh, not pulling forward, but kind of resting into the back. So connect to that core. We're gonna press into the tops of the feet and we're gonna lift the knees and it can be a half inch, like I'm barely off the ground. <sighs> Find your breath. We're just gonna find a little bit of heat in the belly here for five, four, three, two, and one. Go ahead and relax the knees down. Take a breath. We're gonna do this two more times. Connect to the core, and when you're ready, lift. We're gonna hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, rest if you need to, two, and release. So this next opportunity, we're going to do this. If you'd like to get a little bit more core activation, we're going to um, move one leg at a time. We're going to draw um, right knee towards right elbow, left knee towards left elbow. You don't have to do that. So take a nice deep inhale. <sighs> Release the breath, and then when you're ready, connect to that core, low belly to spine. Draw the knees up, and here we go. Just walk the legs forward, connecting to that core. Holy cow. Five, four, three, two, and one. Release it down. Go ahead and draw the forearms down to the ground here. Find a little wrist action and you can kind of swing the hips from side to side if that feels good to you. Or you can sit back on your heels, whatever you'd like to do. A few more breaths here. Just rotate through the wrists. And then let's go ahead and bring the hands back up. We're going to walk them out just a little bit beyond our shoulders. We're going to turn those toes under and we're going to come into our downward facing dog. And as always, I always, always, always invite you to enjoy the journey. So not quick, but nice and slow getting into the muscles, being very generous with yourself. Taking the time to notice, enjoy, say hello to parts that haven't been uh, noticed before, maybe. Walk the dog, 
dropping the heels to the ground, bending the knees. And remember, we've, we're pressing into our palms and powering up so our arms are nice and straight. We've got an outer rotation, an external rotation in our shoulders. So um, almost as if you're drawing your triceps in towards your nose. And then pause here, and we're just going to take a couple of breaths. And I invite you to pull in the low belly to the spine, and almost as if someone is pulling on your hips, see if you can lift a little bit higher, pressing into the palms, lengthening through the spine, feeling that stretch connect at the tailbone, and then draw down the backs of the legs. That should feel really good. Anchor down that left heel. Inhale, right foot to the sky. Big breath in. Exhale, elbow. Uh, sorry, knee draws towards your right elbow. Exhale. Inhale, lift. Exhale, draw it forward. Inhale, lift. Last time. Exhale, come on forward, bring that foot forward and frame that right foot with your hands. You got it. Left hand down to the ground. Let's breathe the right hand to the sky as we find our revolved twist. You can take a moment here to kind of play with the wrists. So we're going to do a little bit of movement here as we inhale. We're going to straighten out the front leg as we exhale. We're going to come back into our lunge and we're going to bring our hand out in front towards the front of the mat. If you want to, you can drop your back knee. So when you're ready, pressing into the sole of the foot in the front, pressing out through that back heel. Let's take an inhale, straighten out the legs and exhale and reach forward with the hand almost as if we're doing a version of humble warrior here inhale straighten it out exhale right hand comes forward inhale straighten it out good and exhale bring it down let's do one more time bring it up this time when you exhale you're going to go ahead and bring the right hand down to the ground and we're going to come into a nice high lunge here. And we're going to kind of do that same movement as we uh, just did, as we straighten out the legs. So when we take a big breath in, we're going to straighten out the legs, get on those toes in the back, and we're going to exhale, float the hands down, come back into our lunge, fingertips towards the ground, inhale, straighten it out, and exhale, bring it down. You got it. One more time. Big breath in. And this time, we're going to exhale all the way down. And we're going to bring that left foot forward to meet the right. And we find ourselves in a forward fold here. This is a great place to use those blocks, like I mentioned before. I don't do um, a full forward fold because of my low back. So if you're in that same boat, you might find that a flat back is much more comfortable. But either way, you choose. Pressing into the soles of the feet, lengthening down the spine. One more breath here. And bending into the knees, dropping the booty down. Let's find our chair pose. Fingertips can reach towards the sky or they can be in front, depending on how your balance is today. Weight is into the heels. Belly is pulled back towards the spine. Tailbone is relaxed. Let's take an inhale, draw ourselves up. And exhale. Stay here. 
We're going to find a mountain pose for just a couple of breaths. So I invite you to take your feet close together, toes and heels together, lengthening through the spine, palms are shining forward, shoulders are relaxed back, and perhaps you close your eyes. What is it that you feel? Let go of any stinking thinking. Draw in love from the soles of the feet, pulling it in from the earth all the way up through the soles of the feet and the legs all the way up to the heart space. Take a big breath in, fingertips to the sky, palms together, and we float down all the way back into our forward fold. Take an inhale, find a flat back, and exhale, bring those hands down, bending the knees generously, and we are going to take the left foot back. We come back into our lunge, big breath in. Bring the hands to the sky. Good. We're going to find a little twist action here. So take a nice deep inhale. And we're going to exhale, twist to the right. Arms lengthen out. Press through that back heel. Press into this front foot, making sure that your knee is towards your toes. As we inhale, we start to turn forward. Bring the hands to the sky. And exhale, we twist again. Beautiful. One more time. Big breath in. Fingertips to the sky. As you exhale this time, we're going to bring left hand down to the ground. Right hand comes to the sky. We find our revolve twist. So we're going to bring our right hand down on the inside of your right foot. We're going to turn the back foot so the sole of the foot is to the ground and we're gonna bring ourselves up into our warrior two knee is focused towards that second and third toe you're pressing generously into the back foot connecting to big toe little toe and heel shoulders are relaxed we have our head over heart our heart over our pelvis and we take a big breath when we're ready and we find peaceful warrior right hand to the sky and exhale, warrior two. Let's do that again. Big breath in, reach for the sky. And exhale down. One more time, big breath in. This time we're going to cartwheel all the way down to the ground. Turn that heel up and bring that right foot back. And we're going to find plank here. You're welcome, as always, to drop the knees down, binding your plank. So we're not up like a downward dog. We are straight. That's why they call it planking. Remember that weird planking sensation that was like all over social media years ago? People were planking in the weirdest positions. Hugging that low belly in. If you're shaking, that's awesome. You're letting stuff go. One more breath. Drop to the knees, toes together, hips reach behind you, and we find our resting pose, our child's pose. Now, if your shoulders are tired, you can draw them back towards your toes and really just let them relax. You've got this. So maybe while we're here in child's pose, we find this nice little rock on the forehead gently from side to side. I think this is my favorite little self-massage ever. Good. 
start to find a little bit of movement in the fingertips. We're going to begin to slowly draw the hands forward, lift ourselves up into tabletop. We're going to draw those hands out farther away or farther out from our shoulders. We're going to turn our toes under. And again, I extend the invitation to explore your way into your downward facing dog. And this time, maybe you try to stretch up a little bit higher. Maybe you notice you're pressing into the hands a little bit more. You feel your shoulders round out as you find that external rotation in the upper shoulders. Maybe you connect a little bit more with the legs. You know, this is your practice. I just simply am here to be your guide and offer suggestions. So let's come to pause. So bring the feet into center. Press through the palms. Anchor down through that right heel. Take an inhale. Left leg reaches up. Big inhale. As you exhale, draw elbow to knee. Knee to elbow. Exhale. Inhale. Bring it up. Extend the leg out. Three-legged dog. Exhale. Come forward. Inhale. Lift. And this time we're going to exhale, draw the leg all the way forward, planting that left foot down, right hand to the ground, and go ahead and inhale, left hand to the sky. And if you want, you can always drop your hips down a little bit more in this shape, only if you want, only if it feels good, making sure that your left knee is kept in the center so you're not dropping it out. All right, so we're going to do that little movement where we straighten out the legs. So taking an inhale, lifting the hips up, straightening out both legs. And then as we exhale, we're going to reach that left hand forward, coming into kind of a variation of humble warrior. And then inhale, lift up, straighten out, and exhale, bring it down. Inhale, lift it up. And exhale, bring it down. One more time, inhale, lift it up. And exhale, go ahead and frame the foot. And we're going to make our way into our high lunge. And you're always welcome to drop that back knee. And then when you're ready, inhale, straighten out the legs. Reach the fingertips up and exhale, float the hands down. Let's do that again. Inhale, hands to the sky. Straighten out the legs and exhale, release. This is good too because you're uh, stretching out the bottoms of the feet. Inhale, lift up and exhale, bring it down. We're going to come into our forward fold here and whoo, relax for a few moments, connecting the soles of the feet to the ground, lengthening through the crown. And uh, if you are in a complete forward fold, you're welcome to draw the hands to the elbows, take a gentle swing from side to side. You can bend your knees if you'd like. Whatever feels good to you. Take one more breath here. Come to center. We're going to drop our booties down. We're going to come back into our chair. So, weights in the heels. Tailbone is relaxed. Belly's pulled into spine, shoulders are relaxed, and the gaze is forward. Strong chair. Take an inhale, draw the hands down, push yourself up. And just exhale here into your mountain pose. 
And again, I invite you to draw the feet together, zipping up the legs, closing the eyes, and be present. Fingertips up, palms together, and exhale all the way down, finding your forward fold. Release the breath. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, release it down. Hands to the mat. We're going to bring our right foot back again. And we're going to draw ourselves back into our high lunge. Let that back heel push back towards the back of the mat. Front knees towards our second and third toe, and we're going to find our twist. So inhale, fingertips to the sky. Exhale to your left. Keep that front knee front and center. Inhale, chest and comes forward, arms reach high. Exhale, arms reach out, almost as if we're in warrior two. Inhale back to center. And we're going to exhale, right hand down to the floor, left hand to the sky. Go ahead and exhale, left hand down. On the inside of the left foot, we're going to bring that back heel to the ground. And we're going to go ahead and kind of cartwheel ourselves up into our warrior two. And you may feel like you need to make some adjustments. That's totally fine. I used to, in my practice, I used to get so frustrated when my shape wasn't perfect. And uh, we try to, as, we, as we, we continue on our yoga journey, we really try not to do that, you know, because every day is different. And we really just kind of have to honor where we are at the moment. And, you know, if my warrior two, if I can't go from my high lunge into my warrior two in one fell swoop without doing any adjustments, that's okay. Sometimes we need adjustments. So knee towards our second and third toe. We're pressing into the whole sole of the foot and the back. When you're ready, we're going to take an inhale, left hand to the sky, right hand down, peaceful warrior. And exhale back to warrior two. Relax those shoulders. Inhale, peaceful warrior. Exhale, warrior two. Bring those arms to outstretch, reach, 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 sending power, magic through those fingers. Last time, breathe it in. And this time, we're going to straighten out that front leg. Good. And we're going to exhale, bring the hand down, and we're going to parallel our feet. So we come into nice wide-legged stance. We're going to take our hands, and we're going to put them at our hip creases. And we're going to draw on the low belly just a little bit. We're going to lengthen through our spine, and we're going to rotate from the hip crease. So we're not rotating down from our backs. We want to protect our back. So rotating from that hip crease, you're going to feel your thighs start to rotate in. You're going to feel those sits bones start to spread out a little. And we're going to come to this space where we're parallel to the floor. This is another great place to use your blocks if you'd like. Matter of fact, I'll demonstrate for you just so you have an idea. Go ahead and bring the hands down, and this is where I would use my blocks. And just check in on your feet real quick. Make sure you're not dumping to the outer edge, but we're pressing into the big toe. Our knees aren't locked. But hopefully you're getting a little bit of a stretch through the backs of the legs. So from here, we're going to drop the left knee 
and straighten out the right leg. So from here, you're going to get a nice little stretch on the inner part of the thigh, probably all the way down to your right ankle. As you inhale, you're going to start to straighten back up and exhale, bending into your right knee, stretching out the left leg, left inner thigh. Ooh. And let's continue that a few more times. So as you inhale, walk yourself to center. And as you exhale, pressing into the soles of the feet, you bend into that left knee. Take a breath or two here. And then when you're ready, inhaling back to center. And exhaling, bending into that right knee. Inhale back to center. And this time we're going to start to walk our hands over to our left foot. We're going to turn the toes of the left foot and we're just going to continue walking. Let the heel of the right foot come up off the ground. So we're kind of in a lunge here. And we're going to release the left foot back, come into our plank position. Again, knees down if you choose. And just hold and breathe. Feel how much stronger you are than when you began. Patience, perseverance, practice. Three, two, one. Come to the knees, please. Toes together, heels uh, up, hips back. Find your child's pose. And again, you can choose to draw the hands to the feet so your shoulders can really, really relax. Or you can just let your arms reach out in front of you. And then when you're ready, we're going to start to draw ourselves back up. We're going to go ahead and walk our knees forward and drop our hips down. And we're going to come on to our back. So go ahead and release down. Pressing the soles of the feet into the ground so the knees are towards the ceiling. Palms are pressed into the ground, lots of space, nice broadness across the back, between the shoulders. And we're going to come into our bridge pose. So pressing into the soles of the feet, we're going to start to lift the hips. You're going to get some engagement in the glutes, in your hamstrings, which is great. Just lift as high as feels comfortable. You may be, be able to lift all the way up until you feel like you're teetering on your shoulders, or it may only be just a little bit. And then when you're ready on an exhale, you're going to begin to lower down, starting from the upper back, lower back, tailbone, relax. Let's do that again. Press into the soles of the feet. Palms are pressing into the ground. Inhale. Lift yourself up. Very active through the shape. And exhale. Releasing down. You got it. Let's do that again. Bring it on up. All the way up. And if you'd like, you could take a bind. So drawing the hands together, walking the shoulders underneath you. Pressing into the feet. And then when you're ready, you 
can release the hands, lock the shoulders out gently, and lower yourself down. Draw those knees into the chest. Find a gentle rock from side to side. Go ahead and bring your fingertips on the inside of your calves. So the arms are going to wrap around the outside of the legs. Fingertips come in and you're going to just open the knees and just allow an inner stretch or a stretch to the inner thighs, softening through the shoulders. You can rotate through the ankles, whatever feels good here. And then as you're ready, you're going to draw your knees back to center. And we're going to bring the soles of the feet to the ground, widen the stance on the feet, and find a couple of windshield wipers here. And maybe bring the arms up into cactus arms. So straight out from the shoulders, fingertips towards the ceiling, arms are bent. Very slow windshield wipers, as if you are moving through honey. You know, we say that, but I wonder if that would actually be fun <laughs> to be in a big vat of honey. Me personally, I think I'd be happy to uh, be in a big vat of coffee beans. I just think that would be so fun. Be great for your skin. Get some natural oils going on there, and man, would it smell so good. Is that weird? I don't know. I don't think I care. <laughs> Keep it going. Just a few more side to side. Relaxing the upper body. Good. Come on back to center. And I'm going to invite you to release your legs out. And you might widen them a little bit so our knees and our toes have plenty of space to relax. You can leave your hands and arms in cactus. You can draw them down by your side. You can put a blanket or a bolster under the knees. You can cover up if you'd like. You can rest a blanket under the head as we come into our final resting pose, our Shavasana. The most important shape in our practice, it's where we come and we get to draw in all of the nourishment from all the poses that we did. We give our body an opportunity to relax and just absorb all the goodness. So soften the space between the eyes. Relax the cheeks and the jaw. Let your shoulders slip down to the ground. Maybe you sense a connection along the spine to the earth. Allow your arms to rest heavily. Your fingers and toes are light. Release any tension or holding in the legs, softening the knees. And surrendering to some silence and peace.
If you'd like, you can stay right here. If you're ready to get on with your day, you can start to find a little movement in the fingers and toes and begin to draw in a deeper breath. Maybe a stretch might feel really good, drawing the hands above the head, drawing all the muscles in for just a breath, and then releasing and rolling onto your side, whatever side calls to you, letting your head rest on your arm for just a few breaths. to come into a seated position, slowly press yourself up, and just come to a space that feels comfortable and nourishing. heart space, we're right back where we began honoring ourselves and our practice. I'm so happy, honestly, that you've joined me today. And I hope wherever your journey takes you until we meet again, brings you adventure and pleasure and all the good things that fills, fills your heart up with joy. Take good care. Namaste.